So in our previous video, we established the idea of linked genes. We're going to continue that discussion on gene linkage by entitling this next flowchart linked genes 2. So let's write that down, linked genes 2. This time what we're going to do is more so specifically figure out how we can tell whether or not something is unlinked or linked because this is going to be something that's going to be asked of you to figure out based off of percentages, based off of gametes that are seen, based off of parental offspring, based off of F1 and F2 results, is this uh, gene linked or is it unlinked to its uh, associated gene? And we're going to figure that out by doing this. We're going to be determining, let's write this down, determining gene linkage via dihybrid test cross. So determining gene linkage via dihybrid dihybrid test cross again look how useful dihybrid test crosses are this is why we spent so much time on them in our previous Mendelian genetics lecture so let's get right to it if we have we have two situations actually we have two possibilities if the thing that we're looking at the genes that we're looking at are unlinked the following will occur which we'll do underneath this, and if they are completely linked, so I'm going to write this down over here, I need a little bit more space, if completely linked, we're going to do that situation and those results over here. So you should still, you should already have a general idea of what you expect to see based off of our previous video, but this video is just here to sort of drive it all home, to make sure that it sticks. So, Let's imagine we have unlinked. When we have unlinked, I want you to always think this is going to be normal and what else? Mendelian, right? It's going to be normal. Write that down as a side note, plus Mendelian, just on the side so that we have a general idea of what to expect. Normal and Mendelian. This is unlinked. This is going to follow Mendel's laws. So let's see. We're going to look at an F1 TC, meaning an F1 test cross. This F1 test cross will be between capital D lowercase d and capital E lowercase e, basically a, a heterozygous individual at both alleles, crossed with, remember this is a dihybrid test cross, you should know what I'm crossing this with, it's going to be with the recessive of both alleles, lowercase d, lowercase d, lowercase e, lowercase e, that is a test cross, you take whatever you have and you cross it with a homozygous recessive at all alleles. Now, what are our gametes? What are our gametes at play? Let's write this down. So the gametes possible here are the following. Again, this is unlinked, so I just have to pick two. I have to pick any combination of two of these alleles because it's haploid. There are four total alleles. I can only pick two, and they have to be two separate ones because I'm trying to think of gametes, okay? One from each representative allele. So I have a couple of options. I can do capital D and capital E as a gamete. I can also very well do capital D and lowercase e. I can also very well do lowercase d, capital E. And I can also do um, lowercase d, lowercase e. And that's all actually from just our first individual. Now, of course, this is going to be a little redundant. This guy over here, or girl, whatever the, this ha homozygous recessive individual is, they also have gametes possible. But their gametes are simply D and E, right? And I already wrote them down. So you don't have to write it again because we've established every single type of gamete possible within this test cross. But just so that you know, this one is also going to promote and give its gametes of D and E already listed here because there's an option of combining this lowercase and lowercase over here. But just so that it's clear, I also did it on the side for you. What are our results now? So we've talked about gametes. Let's talk about the cross results. The results are as follows. We're going to end up with, and you should be comfortable understanding these results based off of Punnett squares and test crosses that we've done before. We're going to have one-fourth capital D lowercase d, capital E lowercase e basically a heterozygous individual, and we're also going to have one-fourth lowercase d, lowercase d, lowercase e, lowercase e. These are two possibilities, and these two possibilities are guaranteed, absolutely guaranteed. Thus, I'm going to state right now that these results, basically that 50% of the offspring 
from this initial F1 test cross, the offspring, these are the offspring right here that I just did, 50% of them, because one-fourth plus one-fourth gives us one-half, right? 50% of the offspring actually have the exact same parental genotype. Look, this is kind of unique. You have capital D, lowercase d, capital E, lowercase e. Look at dad over here. They have the same exact thing. And over here, look once again, same exact thing. So these are the exact same parental genotype seen in 50% of the offspring. Well, if I have one-fourth and one-fourth, that means I'm missing another two-fourths. Well, you we also have these results. You also will end up, and you should be comfortable understanding why you get this, capital D, lowercase d with lowercase e, lowercase e. And you will also end up with one more, because it's four possible options. The last one will be homozygous at the first allele and heterozygous at the second now you have a nuance. You have something very interesting happening here. You have the other 50% of your offspring. This other 50% of your offspring is not the parental genotype. Not parental geno. So we'll say parent geno. They are actually referred to as recombinant. I'm putting that in quotes. Recombinant. This is recombinant genotypes. These genotypes recombined and rearranged to look different than the parents. Because this looks different than that and that. And this looks different than that and that. That's why it's a recombination of what we started with. A recombination of the parents. Therefore, we're going to write this down. This is the symbol for therefore. If you've taken calculus or math, you probably know this. Three dots in a triangle format. What we notice is that in completely unlinked, in if we have unlinked genes, we're going to end up with a 50-50 parental to recombinant, just the ratio, 50-50 parental to recombinant ratio. This will show us and tell us and guarantee us that we are looking at unlinked genes. Thus, we are looking at genes that are normal. And thus, we are looking at genes that are Mendelian, that follow Mendel's laws. This is normal. Take a minute to absorb this. In our next video, we'll look at the completely linked situation.